been in public school, charter school, or homeschool, chances are your parent, just like me, looking for a way to channel all of your children's creative energies over the summer. At Us More Books and More, we've got you covered. We're going to be talking about art appreciation. We'll be talking about fun projects that you can do with your kids or that they can do on their own as well. One of the great educators, Charlotte Mason, had this to say about providing an intellectual culture for your kids. She said that it's the cultivation of the power to appreciate, to enjoy whatever is just, true, and beautiful in thought and expression. And that's what we're going to be talking about to start with. So first off, I wanted to show you the Usborne book of famous artists. This is a beautiful book full of color reproductions of some of the most famous art pieces and artists that we know. So you've got everybody from Degas to El Greco, Matisse, Salvador Dali, lots of wonderful artists in this book. This would be a great reference. We also have the Usborne Famous Paintings. Now these are cards. I'm just going to pull them out so you can see them. These are a fantastic resource, particularly if you put a hole punch in the corner and put them on a binder ring. It helps it so that they do not get lost quite as easily. On the back, there's more information about each painting. It'll tell you who painted it, when, a little bit of interesting information, what to look for on there. I love these cards though because you can do what Charlotte Mason says about doing a picture study. So you can either take one artist and look at one card for a week. Um, you can rotate artists each week. You can study one artist for a month. But what I love about Charlotte Mason style picture study is that you have your child study the picture for about a minute. They take in every detail they possibly can. Then they turn it face down on the table and they're either going to narrate back to you orally what they saw. Um, they can write down what they saw, as many details as they remember, or they could also choose to draw just a simple version of what they saw as well. You'd be amazed at how much their powers of observation increase over the week or the month that you're studying that particular work of art. So once they've done all that study, you also want to have them reproduce it themselves. So you can do it simply like this. This is the Esborn Art to Color book. So it has one of the famous paintings, in this case by Van Gogh, and then the child colors in uh, the reproduction on the other side. I'll give you a look at some of the other ones there. Beautiful book, lots of fun there. Um, we also have the Esborn Art Activity Book, which also has several famous paintings in it. It teaches your child things like perspective, um, it's going to show them color scheme. You have a chance to create your own sticker art gallery, so there's lots of interactive fun in this book as well. Your child will learn a lot about many different art styles as they reproduce some of the famous paintings in here. The next one I'll show you is the Esborn Art Treasury. This guy is awesome because you'll see that there's a famous piece of art. So for example, this one, we have a winter scene with skaters near a castle. You have some information over here about the use of color and the artist. And then directly after that, there's an art project. In this case, you're doing winter trees that shows your child step-by-step -step how to imitate that style of art. So I'll give you a look at some of the other pages in here. If your child's a fan of Andy Warhol, pop art, or just comics and superheroes, or maybe even our graphic novel series, try out our Make Your Own Comics. Here are a few of my favorite activities. This is the Usborne Nature Journal. 
And keeping a nature journal is a wonderful activity for children to do. They can record their observations as they play outside. There's all kinds of fun facts here. They'll improve their writing as there are suggestions for words they can use to describe what they're seeing. There are also different tree leaves in here for them to learn about. Um, there's a sketch that shows them how to draw a tree. This is so good for them as it increases their powers of observation as they label different parts of the animals or the insects that they see out in nature. And they record the temperature. They could record, they could do a pond study over time where they go at the beginning of summer and then by the end of summer see what the pond looks like. They could label the parts of a flower and then watch as it slowly decays, drawing the different stages of that so they can document the life cycle of the plant. To help them, you can always use things like the outdoor book, the Swarm Book of Rocks and Minerals, or one of our great pocket books. your children to love art by setting up a semi-permanent place in your home for them to go when creativity strikes. Stock that area with things like tape, could be duct tape, could be washi tape, could be colored pencils, or tins of crayons, or watercolor, whatever it is that you feel most comfortable with and the medium that your children love to use. They will love having easy access to the things that enable them to fuel their imagination. Promote greater creativity and wrist strength for writing in your young artist by purchasing a double-sided easel like this one from Ikea that even comes complete with butcher paper. For even more summer fun, provide a special basket or bin full of activity books for your children to find. Extra sneaky tactic for helping your children continue to read over the summer and enjoy art is a common homeschool practice called strewing, in which you simply take the books that you would love for your children to find and put them in a common area, then sit back and watch the magic happen.